Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a micro video. In this video, we will explore the important distinction between pure monopoly and a supplier that has monopoly power. So a monopoly in its purest form is when one business dominates the whole market. It has 100% concentration. Uh, in reality, the UK Competition and Markets Authority describe a monopoly as any firm with more than 25% of the industry's sales. A firm with more than 40% of the market is said to be a dominant firm. So what is a pure monopoly? Well, pure monopoly is actually quite rare. Uh, and whether or not we're actually we're dealing with a pure monopoly depends in part on how we define the market or the industry. That said, a pure monopoly is a single supplier within a defined market or sector. The firm effectively is the industry in this in this situation. And it's basically a situation where there is no realistic close competitor or substitute for consumers. We often use the term near pure monopoly, and that's where one firm has a market share in and around of 90%. So are there markets and industries that come close to being a pure monopoly? Well, uh, yes, I suppose there are. Google has a clear lead in terms of uh, web search. Uh, we'll look at some data on that in a second. Uh, Eurotunnel clearly has a monopoly on if you define the market as underground travel between the UK and France. Of course, if you if you broaden the definition of the market just to travel, uh, it doesn't have a monopoly, but Eurotunnel has a, a clear monopoly in that sense. Uh, some of the regional water companies have significant, almost near pure monopoly status in terms of providing water and sewage services to their communities. And likewise, the London Underground obviously has a significant monopoly power in it, its clearly defined sector. What are the key characteristics of pure monopoly? Well, typically, pure monopolies have huge, significant internal economies of scale. Indeed, the minimum efficient scale, or MES, may be so high that only one supplier realistically can fully exploit available scale economies. We call that, of course, a natural monopoly. Typically, a pure monopoly may have significant regulatory barriers to entry. They may have to have a license to operate. Uh, they may have been awarded a franchise or something like a train operating company with a rail franchise or Camelot with a license to operate the National Lottery. Some state-owned firms, of course, have state monopoly uh, protection. Pure monopoly may also be in a market where there's a, a lot of trade barriers, where protectionism gives a, a domestic firm monopoly power. And typically, it may have localised monopoly power. It could be the only shop in the in, in a town or a village. It could be the only taxi company locally that people use. So if there's no close substitute available, that ramps up, if you like, their monopoly power. A little bit of data just to cement the idea. Well, Google, I suppose, comes close to being a near pure monopoly in terms of this example, the market share of search engines held by Google over the last four years. I've noticed I've shortened the y-axis there, but uh, Google, as you can see, has somewhere between 85 and 90 percent monthly market share of search. One of their rivals is Bing. I was reading yesterday that uh, Google is the most commonly searched string in Bing as well. If you then uh, look at a slightly different market, uh, web browsers, the market share of web browsers in the UK just a few months ago. Again, Chrome has a is easily, um, Google's web browser is easily the most popular in the UK, having 49% of the market. Safari, of course, is Chrome's nearest rival. So here's a good example of uh, effectively a duopoly where the two uh, browsers together have in excess of 80% of the market, well ahead of the 4.5% held by Microsoft's, Microsoft's Edge. Uh, this is an interesting, again, def definition of market really is important here. So this chart shows the global market share of express and courier service providers in the global industry. And again, DHL is the biggest firm. It has almost a dominant position in the market, 38%. But this is an oligopoly because FedEx and uh, UPS, United Parcel Service, they have a global market share of 24, 22% to 
together. So here we have essentially a, 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 well, an oligopoly. Three firms together uh, have, uh, have over 80% of the market. So it depends on how you define the market. Uh, last chart, just to give you a little bit of background here. This is the the uh, the market share of the liquid refreshment beverage sector in the United States. If you just take carbonated drinks, Coca-Cola has a dominant position, over 40% market share, if you define the market in that way. However, if you include carbonated soft drinks, bottled water, sports drinks, uh, ready-to-drink teas, juices, all that kind of stuff, if you broaden the definition of the market, Coca-Cola's share drops to just over 18%. A Pepsi, quite a long way behind, and, and other brands, Mountain Dew, Dr Pepper, etc. All of these, of course, are huge scaled businesses. But if you broaden the definition of the market to liquid refreshment drinks, then Coca-Cola's market share comes down quite a bit. What stops an industry becoming or being a pure monopoly? Well, a pure monopoly may well have their legal monopoly taken away. A few years back, the Royal Mail's legal statutory monopoly on delivering parcels and letters was taken away. The industry was liberalised and the parcel sector in particular now is very highly contestable in many ways. Technological change over time creates new substitute products, new entries, new rivals come into the market as the entry barriers come down and that uh, diminishes the pure monopoly status of, a, of, a, of an established firm. Uh, competition authorities may find other ways to inject fresh competition. Uh, at the moment, for example, in the UK, the, the rail industry, uh, the regulator there, is trying to increase the number of access operators who fill in some of the gaps in timetables on particular lines, adding to competition in the market. And there is always, always the threat of potential rivals. So most industries are contestable to a degree. Finally, what are the key features of businesses having monopoly power. So pure monopoly is rare, but most firms, Google, London Underground, Thames Water, they have monopoly power. They have market power. So what are the key features of that? First of all, of course, they've got price setting ability, including the option of using widespread price discrimination. We have a separate video on, on all that kind of stuff. The ability to harness barriers to entry to maintain supernormal profits needs to be emphasised. Uh, however, market power depends on the structural characteristics of the industry. So the extent that the extent to which there are a big economies of scale and even firms with a lot of market power might need to consider the threat of potential rivals. This concept of interdependence, of course, is crucial to understanding the theory of oligopoly. The ability of a firm to influence or control terms and conditions on which goods and services are bought and sold is essentially the, the key part of monopoly power. Uh, and of course, a firm that has market power is likely to use it to charge higher prices than if an industry was more competitive, more contestable.